Oh my goodness. This time, an American Viscountess at Pentilly Castle, I step into another world with Ted. Uh, we found that there's a, a vault underneath <gasps> here, which is completely sealed. About here, there's the remains of a chair with a, a, a body. No. Yeah. No, no, no. He's, he's just sitting there waiting. What? You <laughs> saw him? He's just you there. What? Yeah. He, so he did really do that? Bigger than you. Okay, so, so these... You, and when Sammy and I go foraging for slows, I face up to my greatest fear. Do you think they're thirsty? They just want some slow gin, don't they, really? Or they want me. <laughs> When I married into the British aristocracy, it was the start of a wonderfully exciting journey, but it was also a little daunting. I became a Viscountess, and for an American girl from a small town outside Chicago, that was quite a shock. I live with my husband, Luke, heir to the Earl of Sandwich, and our family at Mapperton House in Dorset. Mapperton is a glorious sandstone house dating originally from the 1540s. It is known as Britain's finest manor house, and it is full of wonderful treasures collected by Luke's ancestors. Living in a place like this is a joy, but also a challenge. And every day we're aware that we're preserving a very special part of Britain's heritage. Mapperton has opened up an extraordinary new world for me, and I can't wait to share it with you all. So if you love castles and manors and stately homes as much as I do, please join me as I head off to visit some of Britain's most spectacular historic homes. On these trips, I'll be meeting other owners who manage these large houses and estates, as well as some of the fantastic people who work there too. With them, I'll be exploring the history, the landscapes, and the innovations of generations past and present. And I'm particularly keen to meet the remarkable women who, like me, have married into these families, bringing new ideas, energy, and more than a touch of style. I'll be sure to roll up my sleeves and help out with a few jobs along the way. Is there a snake in here? Yeah. What? What? So please join this American Viscountess as I journey into the British countryside in search of some of Britain's finest historic houses. Pentilly Castle stands on the banks of the River Tamar in Cornwall in the southwest of Britain. It's been home to the Corriton family for over 300 years. Hidden in a far corner of the estate is a monument to Sir James Tilly who built the castle in the late 17th century. And there's uh, the mausoleum. <sighs> Splendid. I mean, just it's... extraordinary. So this... This was built, this is a folly. It, it, is it... Yes, a folly, but it didn't have any real purpose. But I think it was built in about 16, 1670, 1680. Right. Um, with Timmy Tilly anticipating or wanting to come up here and read a book and drink wine and get away from a nagging wife. Right, so, so he <laughs> built this, he yes, commissioned yes, this. Yes, I think so. There's right, no record of it right, before. So, right. And so this was his escapism, if you like. And I, I, I think so. I and I suspect a, I, he was able to look out and be like, Oh, look at what, this what a great man am I. Oh, I right, I've got yeah. a little wooden shed in a field over there that I use for the same purpose. <laughs> <laughs> not quite as grand or spectacular. No, as it's this. not. So, are we allowed to go? Yeah, yes, of course we are. Okay. Wonderful. It was in terrible condition, but we spent a certain amount of time restoring it, so it's all held together with stainless steel now. This is um, where James Tilly would come and just... Well, the wind, there used to be windows either side, and I think there was a, originally a flat roof, a belvedere, so you could go up and sit, stand on the roof and look at the view. Oh, and right. then I think the Victorians added a butterfly roof over, over that. You can see the view of the roof. Yes, 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 I can see that. 
So this is him. It's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a Here he very, is. Very fine statue of him. I think it must have been made after his death because the sculpture wasn't very complimentary of his figure, was he? Right, no, but, he wasn't. But he, the reason he's here is that in his will, he said that he wanted to be placed in his favourite chair, wired to it so he didn't fall over, dressed in his best clothes with his books and his fine wines, uh, and to be taken to the building on Mount Ararat, and this is Mount Ararat, um, and to await resurrection. So it must have been quite an arrogant character to think that he was actually going to be resurrected. It doesn't happen often, does it? No. That we know of. And they, uh, and they... And the story goes that he, he, they brought him up here. Oh, they did. They followed yeah. his direction. Yeah. And, and when we came here, the, the statue was in a, right. a terrible state. When Ted and the family took over the running of Pentilly, nature had reclaimed the building. So um, this... That had fallen out and was lying on the right. floor. And, and all the leaves had come off and the skull had come off. The skull means victory over death. Ooh, oh my goodness, <laughs> it's a, a, I didn't know that. No, no did I. Victory um, over death. So he really did think he was going to be resurrected. Well, I think so. In 2013, a restoration operation began to preserve the monument for the future. We got a wonderful conservation firm to take him to pieces. And, and it was about 180 pieces scattered all over the place. 180 pieces. And, and they put him together. They took him Did up they? to a workshop in Bath uh, and put him together. He, w he didn't have any, any feet left and his, his hands had gone. Right. Uh, and his nose was missing. And whether that was through the roof collapsing on the building or the vandalism, we right. don't know. Right, right. 300 years after Sir James Tilly died, his statue was reborn. We could have aged that. No. But, but I, I wanted to show that it was an intervention. It was a recreation. Exactly. And I think uh, absolutely. And you've kept the graffiti on, I see. Absolutely. Yeah. But wouldn't it be wonderful to find out who had actually scratched it? And I know. I know. Are there any dates on here? I'm looking no, for it. No. None, none that we can find. None that you can find. How? And the, the chair represents a, um, a lawyer's chair because they used to keep all their papers in it. And so when they're sitting on it, no one could get at the papers. <laughs> no one could get at the, the private papers. Would have, would have had a handle there and one the other side, so his servants could carry it from one place to another. During the restoration, something quite extraordinary was uncovered. When we were doing the restoration, we found that the, there was a, a domed vault underneath. The builders came rushing down to the castle and said, there's a vault, there's a vault. So we came tearing up here and found that the was this dome's structure with a couple of big granites there. So we lifted the granites eight steps into a vault, into a chamber, with a, a, a body. No. Yeah. No, no, no. So he's just sitting there waiting. What? You saw him? <laughs> he's just there, yeah. What? It appears that the dying wishes of Sir James Tilly had been realized. The chair, the back of it is still propped up against the wall, but it's so fragile you can't touch yeah, it. No. It's got studs on it which say SRJT. Sir James Tilly. Of course. And did, was there any hidden treasure? <laughs> no, unfortunately not. His <laughs> books and his fine wine, were, there were no signs of it. How it, it, fantastic to be able to restore this, but also to be able to find 300 years later, yes. Sir James and, Tilly lying in the ground and it's or quite, sitting. It's, it's wonderful that people carried out his wishes, isn't it? Yes. Because you know, once you're dead, you've got no, no influence any longer, have you? Right. Well, but, uh, I feel like we should leave him in peace. And, yeah. you know, I think he's very happy. <laughs> But Sarah and, and Sammy here. keep asking me if I want to join him, and I don't think I do, really. No, I think I, you should just leave him to rest. I think I'm happy right this, where he is. this side of the floor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this landscape is so beautiful, and I'm lucky to be visiting Pentilly in the early autumn. Just the right time of year to go foraging for slowberries in the hedgerows. What I didn't realize was that the hedgerows are surrounded by cows. I just want to tell you that <laughs> I do have a massive fear of cows, like so massive, it, like I'm chopping right now. Gather. So I have to, um, like it's not fake, like this is for real. Like that um, is frightening. Makes me want to vomit. Oh no, and It's fine, that. but no, I'm not going to do that mess on you because I really like this. <laughs> well, and your wellies, yeah, don't make a mess of your new yeah. wellies, come on. So um, you're right to have a fear of cows, mm -hmm. but these are okay, we've put the dog in the car. They are mummies and babies. That's yeah. also a thing to be frightened of. But right. they look, they're chilled. They're happy. They've got over there being super inquisitive. Okay. We've got our wranglers. Mm -hmm. And we'll just okay. shout and be bigger than them if they come for lunch. Is that what you do? Is you... Yeah. But they're vegetarian too. They don't want us. Okay. 
It's fine. Okay. We need to pick some okay. slows. We need to pick some slows. Is that all right? I'm here. Yeah. I'll no, pick I know. you up. I'll run. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bigger than you. Okay. So, so these... do, are you familiar with slows? So here's the thing, to be perfectly honest, and that's what I'm all about, obviously. But, <laughs> you know, when I first moved to this country yeah. and we would, you know, we would have the shoots at Matt Britton and or we'd go on a shoot and there's yeah. this thing called the Levenses, right? Yeah. Which you know very well. Yeah. And people would always offer slow gin. And then when they gave me the slow gin, I was confused because it wasn't clear. And I, and then I didn't understand. They said no, but it's from slows, and, I'm and like, it makes it quite slow. And I was like, <laughs> "What are it. slows?" I Try one. I don't think we have slows in America. Or I'm uh, sure we blacks on. I don't know. Maybe do. Delicious. Maybe we don't. What do you think? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm trying to stay in the present moment here. What um, do you think? Is your mouth puckering? Yeah. My, it's like it's hard to talk now. <laughs> You're very brave, you didn't have to do that. Well, no, I, I've never tasted really, one before. Well, there you are. So I was trusting you. <laughs> Sorry. It was worth it. Your face is pretty yeah. picture. Um, they're very tannic, so they're very, whatever that, you know, yeah. now you need a glass of water and your lips are never yeah. going to feel the same. But so, they're, they add, they've they got that great acidity, so they make a great, a great, I don't know, what do you call it? A liqueur, I guess. So add to a bit of gin uh -huh. or a bit of, <laughs> or vodka if you wanted to, but and some sugar. Cool. So how many, slows do you need to make a bottle of gin slow um, gin some <laughs> <laughs> some slows some gin some sugar in the quantities you decide i'm pleased sammy is here to protect me from the cows but she is also a seasoned forager for slows you need to know what you're picking it's said that slows are best picked after the first frost when they are slightly softer Southwest Britain is rich in archaeological evidence of ancient settlements. Stone circles are believed to have served a ritual and ceremonial purpose, with their position connected to the alignments of the sun and moon. Here at Pentilly, a stone circle dominates this area of the estate where you can see for miles. So this must be quite historical, this stone, the stone circle. circle. Right, well, this, like, well, this, this wizards like Stonehenge. Uh, sort of. <laughs> It, it is the the oldest unadulterated stone circle in Cornwall. Okay. So it's quite ancient. That, that's ancient. It's unadulterated because my father built it in 2017. <laughs> You're kidding me. So it is the oldest unaltered stone circle in Cornwall, but not like minions on Bobman, which has had <laughs> stones fall over and be picked up and all the rest of it. This one's unchanged since it was built four years ago. Oh my good. So why did your father build this? Um, as a, well, because it's an incredible spot, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, but so and what, a reason what, to yeah. get people to come up here. So when we've got right. guests coming to stay, they would walk all around the gardens, but there was no real reason to get them up into, yes. into a field full of cows. <laughs> um, so we built the stone circle, so he built the stone circle. But also Dad's absolutely fascinated with the, the history of, you know, when we're on Dartmoor or walking on Bodmin, he's always like, oh, I wonder who walked here. I wonder why they did this. I wonder why they, what are those tracks in the in the stone? Why did they this? How did they do that? And does, does the circle mean, have any meaning behind it? Or he just, and with the stones, it was just something he's been contemplating for a while. They don't really represent anything, except that these stones, the ones down, further out, yes, are kind the of the leader stones, A, to get you up from the garden, but also where the sun rises in the height of summer. No, winter. Right. Hang on, summer. Yes, going back that way, winter. And then there's one down over there for summer. It's your dad's stone circle. I, I mean, is. this is just Ted's a, it's stone circle. Ted's stone circle. Okay. Well, so, let's, has anybody done all? yoga before in the stone circle? Do you know of? Could we be the first? I haven't. I can't we, really do very good yoga. We can, we can I've got put some the, sort of stretchy legs. I know, I put on. mine on too. So I put the slows in there. Yeah. We can do some sun salutations. Oh, good. And that will, in one sense, sort of like, you know, make these slows produce the best. fantastic <laughs> slow gin. Do you think, do you think it'll have like anti-cold properties and all It's going to have of tons them. of antioxidants. Yeah. It's going to have, it's going to boost our immu immune. And, and our energy and, it, and conquer our fear of cows. Conquer my fear of cows. Your fear yeah, of cows. exactly. Okay, yeah. good. So we're just going to stay standing. So, oh, yep. So we're going to inhale, sweep the arms up. Where better with the sun setting to do some yoga? and I think I need it after being in this field with the cows. For early access to American Viscountess, 
and lots of other benefits, please join as a patron at patreon.com forward slash American Viscountess. Hands together, exhale, heart center. Amazing. I feel better. I love that. Thank and you I, so and much. I, do I look calmer? Yeah, you do. Okay, okay. Yeah, this is okay. good. You've got and, good. And these are going to be you, these are going to be the best tasting, the best slow gin, gin. <laughs> sure. Pentilli has ever made. Back at the castle, I'm happily meeting up with Sammy's husband Mark, who actually works in the gin business and has made me a very welcome and refreshing gin and tonic. He's just the person to show me how to make some slow gin. All right, you can see your wife picked a lot. <laughs> I'm, Amazing. I'm afraid there were cows, and so Sammy learned about my fear of cows, so I was picking one and then looking, and then picking another one <laughs> and looking. But, um, so this is from your wife, really. Well, that's brilliant. <laughs> You've done a, a sterling job there, so thank you. Um, they look amazing. Yeah, so tell me a little bit more because as the American, when I first moved over here, I had never heard of slows. I think we might, maybe we call them something else in America. Okay. But, and I definitely didn't know what slow gin was. And in fact, the first time somebody handed me some slow gin, I didn't think it was gin because of the color of Ribena. it. Ribena. Yeah, I, exactly. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Some black current? Yeah. I asked for a gin. And because yeah. um, that's what you think. You think of yeah. it as clear. Yeah. So the concept of slow gin is? It's one of the things that you sort of, well, as a sort of gin drinker, you look forward to in the winter. Um, so they, so you, this is essentially a, a, a blackthorn um, right. berry. Um, so um, uh, white flowers in, in the spring, um, and then you get this, uh, this sort of surge of lovely little berries that you wouldn't want to eat them. They're really tart. S Sammy had um, me try one. And really? I, yeah, I was just like, sure thing. And then yeah. I was like, I couldn't even, you know, lick yeah. my lips yeah, yeah, yeah. after that. It's, it's really dry. <laughs> yeah. um, but it, you can do lots with it. So either what we're about to do, make a, a sort of a, a slow gin. It's more of a sort of slow gin liqueur because um, we're going to be adding in um, sugar, which uh, sort of affects the ABV. So what I've got um, is mm. some uh, supermarket gin. So okay, so you're, it's fine just to, in one sense, pick any gin and yep. put it in there to make your slow gin, your homemade there slow There is something gin. you have to do first, though. Okay. Don't tell me I have to eat all and those. And you, ha you have to prick every single one. Do you? Yeah, because you, you need to get the... Um, the prick it, like prick? Yeah, to release the flavour. I just prick. Yeah. Like, is that good enough? Yeah, perfect. Okay. It doesn't need to be like sliced. No. Nope. Prick. Okay. Or there's a cheat. Okay. What's the cheat? You throw it into the freezer beforehand, and basically the um, the fact that it's super <gasps> super cold in there will basically break down the the, um, the skins, so it will release I the flavour. So I've saved you a massive okay. task. Okay. Okay. <laughs> freezing it overnight, yeah. and then so so you can do this the quick way yeah. in one sense. Yeah. Well, it's popular here, especially for shooting. Yeah. Right? And so you're out on your 11s is, yep. and everybody has slow gin. That was the, my first introduction. Was it? Most people <laughs> will sometimes start when you're drawing pegs uh, at the beginning of the morning. They'll give you a top glass um, with your slow gin in. Oh. You then have to drink it, and at the bottom of your top cup is your peg number. <gasps> <laughs> so, oh. so you start quite early. <laughs> I haven't been to one of those shoots. Now I yeah, feel like yeah. I haven't cheated. <laughs> well, I'm going to pop, pop <laughs> so those in there. So yeah, early. you know, it's, um, there's uh, people who just enjoy it for what it is. But yes, it, it's, it's, it is synonymous with shooting or field sports. Or um, it's just one of those sort of things that people really enjoy. Yes. Most people say with slow gin, um, it's a third, a third, a third. Okay. So a third uh, fruit, um, a third sugar, and then a third your, your gin. Okay. Um, but I tend to sort of increase my, my fruit a little bit and reduce the amount of sugar that I put in initially. Because once you put the, put the sugar in and it's made, if you make it too sweet, it's, it's, it's too syrupy. And it's, okay. So I, you can always add, add, the, um, add more um, sugar to it at a, at a point in time. Okay. And are um, you tasting it while you're adding that's it? A, that's yes. a really important <laughs> aspect <laughs> of making slow gin. You have to taste it at least once a week. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, so don't look at the label. No, no, no. It's just gin. It's just it's gin. Just it's just gin. It's do you want to do it? Okay, yeah, so I'm going to um, pour it in. So just pour it in. Okay. Make sure. Oh, there we go. That's it. Okay. So this is. And just keep going. And just keep. You, yeah. So I'm pouring the whole thing. Yeah, in. yeah. We're going to fill it all the way up to the top. Oh, my goodness. Why don't you leave a bit of, bit of space um, for, for some sugar? Okay. Oh, wow. 
So this is gonna make quite a lot of slow gin. Yes. Or not really. Yeah, yes. yeah, it will. Look, it's already turning the color, fantastic. So we're gonna get three in here, no. Yeah, I would possibly. Oh, how wonderful. And then how long does this need to stay in? So you have to sort of turn it um, uh, every a couple of days. So give it a bit of a sort of shake up because you want the sugar to um, to dissolve. Yeah. Um, and again, it just helps to sort of move everything around. Um, so I reckon probably three three months and you're just adding so the sugar. Fantastic. This is how you make your own slow gin. So it just means you have to come back. You have I know, to, I, I am. Try it. I've already invited myself. <laughs> I am coming back. I mean, it's, who wouldn't want to come back here? I mean, this is brilliant. I mean, it's just so magical here. How wonderful. Let me put a little bit more gin in and then we'll just give it a shake and then you've got to put it, put it into somewhere sort of dark, um, a dark sort of cupboard. So dark cupboard and then yeah. you check on it every... So give it a shake every, every um, couple of days. Um, and then taste it after six weeks. Yeah, just see how you're getting on. Whether you need to, ah. I forgot the cork, but. <gasps> Lovely. Oh, it's rather pretty. Fantastic. So then this just needs to go into a dark. Yeah, just settle, just, uh, we'll put a cork on it and then, um, and then that's that, done. Okay, great. Well, should we just sit and drink? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and watch, Cheers. and watch the, the slow. <laughs> Slowly well, happening. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Amazing, Mark. Thank you. Next time on American Viscountess at Pentilly Castle, Ted delves into the archives to show me some beautiful early 19th century watercolors. A couple of paintings. That one is as he saw the castle when he arrived. And I joined Sammy for some wild swimming at sunrise. Wait, it's not it's not too it's not too bad. What do you think? Well it's better than it's, I was expecting. I, I feel that it is warmer than the air. If you want to watch the next episode of American Viscountess right now, please join as a patron at patreon.com forward slash American Viscountess.